to give you dates and times, and I'm not going to have any <laughs> revelation charts here that change every time things change. Uh, I, I, but what the Spirit of the Lord has laid on me is the fact that in the book of Revelation, people are worshiping. And I thought, we need to look at those, those, those areas in Revelation where people are worshiping because it gives us a, a sample, it gives us an example, it gives us uh, an idea of what of how we should be worshiping in the last days, and I, I believe worship is changing in the last days. If nothing else, getting more intense, and and there's more warfare going on in churches because of because of worship. Amen. They call them the worship wars. I'm glad we don't have any here. Praise God. That's where you say amen. We're, you may like this song or that song, but we're not going to fight about it. Amen? Amen. Thank God for that. But we, we, we look at this, and, and it really blessed me to realize that there are seven, say seven, there are seven worship themes in the book of Revelation. Seven is the perfect number. Then I began to look at how many other things there are in, in there. There, there are uh, there are seven spirits, seven churches, seven vials, seven trumpets, seven angels, seven kings, seven thunders, seven seals, seven candlesticks, seven stars, seven horns, seven eyes, seven trumpets, seven crowns, seven plagues, seven vials, seven heads, seven mountains, seven lamps, seven descriptions of Jesus. There are 21 sevens, seven times three. Three is the number of Revelation, the Trinity, right? So this cannot be a coincidence that there are 21 sevens in the book of Revelation, including seven acts of worship, seven moments of worship in the book of Revelation. So let's go to chapter 1, verse 1, and we'll get into this, and we'll get into the Word of God. And I'm going to read 11 verses. And I know sometimes I read, uh, read a lot of verses, but for some of you, that's more word than you read all week. Okay. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. The revelation of Jesus Christ is not just his revelation, but it's a revelation about him. It's not really a revelation about the last days. It's a revelation of Jesus which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified by his angel to his servant, John, he kind of talking about himself in the third person, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Verse 3. Blessed is he. I am blessed. Who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and you got to hear and obey those things which are written in it for the time is, oh, it's near now. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, that's basically Turkey. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Mm -hmm. Next verse. Come on, keep up with me. Thank you. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler, say ruler, over the kings of the earth. The president has a boss. <laughs> to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds. And every eye will see him, 
even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Uh -huh. I, John, both your brother and companion, in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Yeah, come on, John. Saying, again, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What you see right in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamus, uh, Pergamus Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Let's stop right there for a minute. So we need to hear and obey. There are four times, and these are the four messages that I'll base this on. There are four times in the book of Revelation where John says, I was in the spirit. This is the first one. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Uh-huh. He put that in there. He, he just wasn't in the spirit but he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now, a lot of people like to say, oh, that, that's cute. He's just saying it was Sunday. Well, that's, that's okay. You can interpret it that way, certainly. He's saying, I, I was in the spirit during the Sunday morning service <laughs> on the island of Patmos, amen, while I was boiling in oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the spirit. You can be around on the Lord's day, but are you in the spirit on the Lord's day? But it's not, but I believe when he said on the Lord's day, capital D, capital D, if it's capital D, we know that the last days are also called the day of the Lord. So really, what he might also be saying is that I was in the spirit I was in the spirit I'm trying to think of the date today. Um, <laughs> yeah, but what month is it? November? OK. I was in the spirit, November 26, 2023. And we're that close. Here's the thing about being in the spirit. One man put it like this. When you're in the spirit, time and location collapse. There is, there is, no, there is no time. There is no location. When you're in the spirit, you could be in any time. And if you're in the spirit, you could be in any place. He, in other words, he said, I came out of my physical being, being in prison on the Isle of Patmos, hallelujah, one of those Greek islands. Whew. I don't think he was enjoying it too much, though. But when you get in the spirit, you see things you can't see in the natural. You go to places you can't go in the natural. You visit time zone, not just zones, but you can go back in time. You can go forward in time because there is no time in God. How many want to spend more time in the spirit? Woo, hallelujah. I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. God took me and just kind of raptured me forward in the spirit. My body's still where, where it was. But I'm thrown forward in time, and I begin to see, actually see, the last days. Is that powerful? Is that powerful? So four times he says it. He says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the Spirit in heaven. And then he says, I was in the Spirit on a mountain. And then the fourth one, and we'll preach all through these, he said, I was in the Spirit in the wilderness. 
In other words, I was in the spirit while I was in Babylon. You can be in the spirit while living in Babylon. The problem with the church today is they don't know how to get out of Babylon. The problem with the church today is they want to, they actually want to act like Babylon. Oh, I can't get an amen. I'll save that for another day. Come on now. So he's in the spirit and he gets these letters to these seven churches. And we've, some years ago, we preached a series through the seven churches and I'm going to skip over that. I'm, I, if I, if I get stuck there, we'll, we'll never get home. Amen. But those seven churches are several things. Number one, there are seven actual churches at the time that John lived and he's writing to these churches. But some people believe these seven churches also represent seven, seven time frames. Amen? And so we're living in the last one, you know, the Laodicean church. We're living in the last church, the last day, and there's a message there for us. Some people believe that, uh, the, that these, also, these seven churches also represent the tribulation. And the stages of the tribulation. We, we, you know, we, we preach through all that, but th that's not what's important. Amen. What's important is they got this letter, but then we get to our first worship scene in, 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 in chapter 4. So let's go to chapter 4, verse 1. After these things I looked, and behold, a door. Chapter 3, the last verse it says Jesus is knocking at the door. The door's closed, and he's knocking at the door. But the very next verse, remember when John wrote this, there were no chapter divisions. So he just goes from one thing to the other. So he says, and behold, the Lord's knocking at the door, and the very next second, he's there in heaven, and he sees a door standing open. See, this is why I want to preach this, because Revelation is not so much about what's going on down here. Revelation's about what's going on up there. And I want to know what's going on up there, because thy kingdom come, thy will be done on as it is in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I heard, and he said, I heard a voice, the first voice, which I heard. Well, it was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come on up here. Woo! Hallelujah. How many want to go on up there? I don't mean you have to die. I'm talking about in the spirit. Come up here and I'll show you things which must take place after this. Immediately. Oh, I love it. Woo! He was caught up in the spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven. The first thing he sees is a throne. Hello, world, there's a throne. Hello, kings and presidents and powers that be and dictators and people who are trying to kill us and lock us up. There's a throne higher than your throne. There's a king higher than, than your. There's a person I know that has more power than you. A saw throne. That's important to understand that God's in charge. We need to remember that in these last days. When things seem to be out of control, just remember God's using it all to bring his kingdom into the planet. Oh. Hallelujah. I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven. So that's the second in the spirit. I was in the spirit in heaven. Wouldn't that be great to get in the spirit and be in heaven? There are other people that's happened to other people, happened to Isaiah, right? Wouldn't it be great to get into the spirit and be in heaven without actually dying? That would be Oh, my God, y'all aren't thinking about it. Y'all aren't thinking about it. Set, throne set in heaven. And one, capital O, one 
He's not sharing power with anybody. Hallelujah. He doesn't have to share power with anybody. Amen. The angels can, the fallen angels can do, amen. Fallen man could, but one sits on the throne. Oh, this preaches all by itself. And he who sat there was like a jasper and sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne with seven colors. That other rainbow has six. Did you notice that number? Mm -hmm. Did they stole our rainbow? No, they made their own. In appearance like an emerald, and around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Mm -hmm. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the Seven spirits of God. Woo. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne, four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. So who are the elders? Who are the creatures? Doesn't matter. Let's move on. One, the first one was like a lion. The second one like a cat. Does that remind you of Isaiah? The third had a face like a man. The fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Verse 8. The four living creatures, each having six wings, they are full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest. They do not rest. They, they never stop. They do not stop. Day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, for those of you who don't like simple courses, you're going to have to pray through in heaven, because this one's got three words. Actually, this one has one word, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Day and night, night and day. Don't you think these creatures get tired of singing the same old song over and over? It, it's really cool because we know it's been going on a long time because over in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah saw the same thing and, saw, and they were singing, holy, holy, holy. And it's the same one singing. <laughs> this blows the mind, which was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, hmm, you are, here, here we go. Here's our first worship song. Well, second worship song. This is our first worship song. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Do you notice all, this, all the singing today was about this sort of stuff? You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? Why? Because you created all things. We didn't come from monkeys. Some of us may act like it, but we didn't. <laughs> you created all things, and by your will, they, they continue to exist and were created. Oh, my God, I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I love these people. I don't believe in God. But yet, yet the name of God, that sacred name of God is Yahweh. 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 Every time they breathe, they say the name of God. Go on, get out of here. Hallelujah. Woo! 
Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are your prayers. Don't ever think your prayers are, are, are never heard. They're, they're there. They're there. And when he had taken the scroll... Did I read that already? Fell down for them, each having a harp and a gold. Yeah. And they sang a new song. Oh, God. Oh, glory. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Why? For you were slain and you've redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Stop right there. You, you, you're worthy because you paid for it. What a price he paid for us. What a price he paid for us. And he says, and you've redeemed us. And, and, it, and it needs to mention here, out of every tribe, every tongue, every people, Every nation. Here's the thing about heaven. It's not going to look like Sunday morning. <laughs> Lord, help us. Lord, we do have 6% Michiganers. Does that count? Even Michiganers will be in heaven by the skin of their teeth. Their new mascot's a cheetah. All right, moving on. I almost said I was sorry, but why lie? Whew, glory to God. This world might put some people down. This world might be prejudiced. This world might think they're better than someone else. But in heaven, we're all there. In heaven, God's saving them from everywhere. He's from every tribe, every people, every nation. Come on, church. Hallelujah. When you get to heaven, who knows who'll be at your right and your left? Because they're coming from all over the world in worship. Well, I like to worship with people like me. Oh, you narrow-minded, silly person. Worship's not about you being comfortable. It's about, it's about giving God the glory and the power. Yeah, but if we let everybody in here, we might not have beans and cornbread on our... Oh, my God. You know, one of the great things about traveling is I get to eat food that other people prepared, and you get to immerse yourself in their culture and learn. I love that sort of thing. When you get to heaven, mm, my God, we're going to see them from everywhere. And you know what? We're all going to get along because we got that one thing, the only thing we in common, the blood of the Lamb redeemed us. We're Jesus lovers. And if you love Jesus, I'm with you, man. I don't care what you eat. <laughs> Come on. Verse 10, enough of that. And have made us, he made us. Who wants to be a king? How about a priest? To our God. Do you realize we're going to reign on the earth? We'll tell Biden what to do. I got Biden on my mind today. I got... Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures, the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, just to throw it in there. But we have this, this song, this worship that's going on. My God, hallelujah. And it's going on in the spirit during times of great tribulation. Can I get an amen? My God, hallelujah. Whew. Here's the song. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom. And there's seven of them. <laughs> and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Let's give him all that. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, wow, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing 
and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and Wow. One more verse. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. You know, one of the cool things that I see here is that apparently, and I always wondered about this somewhat, apparently the people in heaven, this is great because we get a window into heaven. And we're like, whoa, look. But here's what blew my mind. Everybody in heaven seems to know what's going on. Did you ever wonder if your loved ones could look down and see what's going on right now? Did you ever wonder at their funeral if they're watching? Am I getting through to anybody right now? I don't know that I can prove it, but this scripture seems to imply that people in heaven know what's going on down here more than we know what's going on up there. Oh, that, that's a powerful, that ought to bless somebody, amen. So this is the Lord's day. This is a time of Sabbath. But one man wrote a... Uh, um, his name is Brueggemann. He wrote an entire big old book. And the title of the book is Sabbath as Resistance. Rest is resistance. Against what? It's resistance against the world system. Coming to church is rebellion. Setting a day aside for God is rebellion against the world system. You don't seem to understand, it ticks them off. They want to end this. You should be making bricks on Sunday. Come on, Pharaoh spirit. You should be working seven days. This is a waste of time. But for them, it's more than that. They hate it. It's against their system because when we come together once a week, we're saying God is greater than what's out there. They're saying what we're doing is more important than what we do the other six days of the week. Come on, church. I know some people are sitting at home on Sunday anymore. You know, well, I'm just going to watch it on TV. I like that little funny. says, well, maybe, maybe... After you die, you won't get to go to heaven. You'll just watch it on TV. What's well, better than hell? At least I'm watching it on TV. Well, some people have to do it that way. I get it. But listen to me. Hallelujah. It's more than just watching. This is not entertainment. This coming to the house of the Lord says he is Lord, he is God, he's in charge, he's king of kings. I honor him, I adore him, I worship him. He's my boss. I fall down and worship. And I'm gonna sing about it. And I'm gonna sing about him. And I'm gonna say amen. And I'm gonna worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It is no coincidence that the first thing John sees is people worshiping. You know what's really powerful? He says, I saw a lamb with horns. Lambs don't have horns. Horns represent authority and power. He's the lamb that conquered. He's the lamb that overcame. He laid his life down and the devil said, I got him now. But out of the midst of hell, the lamb grew a horn and battled his way out and snatched the keys of death, hell, and the grave. 
Rupa Kushandarabataya. The Lamb has power. And the Lamb is the King and the Lord of all. My God. We're going to give Him glory. We're going to give Him honor. We're going to give Him thanks. <laughs> Up there, there's a harp. There are harps and there are bowls. It represents worship and prayer. Notice they're golden. Your prayers are in precious containers. They're in gold containers, solid gold. God treasures every prayer. He can't answer it the way you want to all the time, but he treasures. He notices every prayer. And then there are those beautiful, there, there's incense, right? And there's gold and all that, all that, the harps and the bowls, the worship that's going on in heaven. It's all about the worship church. And I'm afraid in these last days, if churches don't catch that vision, and allow the worship to become energized with the power of the Holy Spirit. If they don't get away from entertainment, and if the congregation would quit expecting to be entertained, they entertain because that's what people want. Come on, put on a good show. Listen, what's going on in heaven is not a show. They're not sitting around saying, mm, that angel's off key. No, no, no. It, 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 it's not about song choice. It, it's not about how, oh, yeah, they sing to it. No, no. It's not about how long they sing. It's not about what, it, amen. They're just singing holy, holy, holy. How can they sing? Let me close with this. How can they sing holy, 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 and then holy, 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 and then holy, holy? How long, how long you want me to go? You'll leave before it's over. I've said this before, but here, you got to picture what's going on here. These angels, the same angels, they're not like, how long are we going to have to do this? Can't we say something else? Holy, holy. It's like, Holy. You know, after a while, they, they change from holy, holy, holy to holy. <laughs> it's one of those words that people use all the time, holy, and they put something. I don't know the things they think are holy are not that holy. <laughs> Starting with cows, Okay. Here's what's going on. We, uh, especially us, we Westerners, we have this picture of God. He's an old man. I mean, he's been around. He's gotten old. He has gray hair, long gray hair, long gray beard. Eyesight's okay. And he's sitting on his throne the old guy, and he's white. What? Don't we have enough old white guys? Come on. And he's sitting there, and he's old. He's, he's sitting down because he's old. And, and, he's, and, and these angels are going and say, holy, holy, holy. Boring. I promise you, I don't know what he looks like, but he doesn't look like that. There's nothing amazing about that. I am an old white guy with gray hair. Not so amazing. <laughs> and I don't have the greatest eyesight. I see you well enough. It's 2030. It's not that bad. Here's what's really going on. 
I, I don't know how to describe the Father as he's sitting on that throne. I, I, don't, I really don't know what to say about the Spirit, the seven spirits of God representing the Holy Spirit. I, I don't, that blows my mind. Where's, you know, and then Jesus shows up, you know. And, but what does God, what does God look, never mind the Trinity, what does, what does God look like? And what are we seeing on the throne? And why are these angels blown away for thousands of years? And the only way I know to explain it, if you can, if you can imagine a beautiful, huge diamond, and you take that diamond, and no matter which way you turn it, He is light. He doesn't, see, that's the problem with the metaphor. Diamonds reflect or refract, is that the word? Light. But he is light. So, so this diamond, you, you, you could look at it for hours. Every time you look, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that, oh, but this is, oh, look at this. That's what's happening with the angels. They're flying around the throne. They go, holy. They look at each other. They take turns. They see something else. Listen, you're never going to, you might get bored with me. One of the greatest miracles of this church is that people, some people have been coming here for 40 years. They've heard me preach 4,000 messages. And for some crazy reason, they keep coming back. I'm not always anointed. Sometimes I'm just annoying. <laughs> but you're never going to get bored in heaven. I'm talking about eternity now. You're not going to be bored. You're going to keep looking at God, and you're going to join the angels and say, Holy, holy. One angel's on one side, and he says to the other angel, oh, look, at, look at there. Holy. The other one goes back, holy. And they've been doing that for thousands of years, and they keep seeing something new about God. They keep seeing something exciting. They keep seeing something miraculous. They keep seeing something amazing, and they keep going around singing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Stand with me. Praise God. Oh, the Lord's in his house. You might get bored with the music. You might get bored with me. You might get bored with where you sit. You may, you, you may, you may get bored with the greeters. <laughs> you, 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 some of you are bored with your spouse. Uh, uh, you, you can get bored. Of, you might be over a lot of things, but you'll never get over seeing him. And it'll be new, not every morning, but every minute. And whatever, whatever crown, whatever rewards he gives you. There's a song I've I've been listening to. Oh, it's on Kyle's new album. And... The singer says, I, I'm, I'm, I forget how it goes, but he says, I'm just blown away because you love me, not, not because of what I've done. You love me because of who I am, of who you made me. So why are we trying so hard to please God when he's already happy with you? You can't get to heaven by pleasing him. You can't really get any closer. You just, you just need, he said, if you, if you love me, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. It'll just happen. It'll just happen because why? Because you love me. For all eternity, we're just going to be around that throne. I guess you get to go to your mansion once in a while. I don't know. Clean house. I don't know. 
I don't know how all that works. We'll have the whole universe. You know, God didn't make this whole universe. And we're the, I believe we're the only planet with people on it. Come on. I know you've seen a UFO. I'm sorry. I don't think there's any other plan. I think God made us uniquely. You know what that means? When you get to heaven, you get to explore the whole universe. <laughs> I think we'll go to Mars. But there you are. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, as he takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Can you sing it again? Hallelujah! What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see as I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace and he'll take by the hand lead me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be let's gather around the tables those that need prayer come to